Alright, so this video is a bit of prelude to the rest of the videos in, in, on introductory biology and it's for anyone who hasn't sort of done chemistry before. So, because in the videos I, I go into a bit of, um, I use some chemical terms and um, I realise that sort of the end that um, some people might not be familiar with them or as familiar as, um, as they would like and it might hinder them a bit in in going through the video. So, I thought I'd make this prelude. If you've done any sort of high school chemistry or if you're any uh, have any knowledge of chemistry or any, in, in any way confident about your chemistry you can skip these videos if you want to watch it go ahead but um if you're just for anyone who's um hasn't done chemistry in a while maybe um didn't do um chemistry in the agency hasn't done it since year 10 or something and just wants to go over some of the um types of types of um, things we talk about in chemistry some of the terms and then some of the different bonds and some of the definitions like pH and stuff um, so prelude to basic chemistry the basic building block for our purposes there um, in these videos it, um, of matter is an atom and an atom it contains protons and neutrons in the middle um, which are in the nucleus in the middle here and it contains electrons which which um, for our intents and purposes we'll just say orbit around the outside um, um, protons in the middle are positive and electrons are negative and um, mainly when we talk about things we'll be talking about electrons because electrons, protons and neutrons are sort of fixed in place in the nucleus but electrons can be ripped off and they can move and they can do things so you can get things like charged species ions or the electrons can, can um, move slightly to different uh, when you do bonds they can be shared with that different atoms and instead of just orbiting this one um, nucleus they'll orbit another one as well or they, they can be um, they can actually be sent through a series of shuttles in, in what we'll see biochemical reactions later when it, electrons are shuttled along a pathway um, and um, that creates energy because um, it's like moving an electric charge it's like moving um, electricity through a cable it's sort of analogous um, you're moving a sort of energy um, when you put it when you rip off an electron you put it in a higher energy state and so you by mo um, moving that electron in a higher energy state you're moving energy pretty much to, to a separate location. So atoms are the basic building blocks and um, there's different variants of atoms and different variants of atoms are pretty much determined by um, the number of protons. So um, the number of protons determines what element the atom is of. Um, so we have things like um, that's things like hyd the difference between hydrogen which has one proton, helium which has two protons and things like um, I don't know um, carbon which has six um, protons and you can keep going up to things like uranium which I think has 92 protons so you can get pretty big um, neutrons different numbers of neutrons can occur as well but th that's to do with things called isotopes which we're not too concerned about in this video series um, different number of electrons generally you have a, a, a generally an atom will have the same number of electrons as protons but if it has a different number it's what's called an ion and then we classify them depending on whether they're positively charged or whether they have two, uh, more protons than electrons or whether they're negatively charged or whether they have more where, where the, a scenario where they have more electrons than, than protons um, and we'll have a look at that in, in just a second when we look at ions um, essentially you can bond different atoms together um, using different chemical bonds which we'll talk about in just a minute um, but you can get several things um, you can multiple atoms joined together are called a molecule and when it's two atoms of the same type it's called an elemental molecule so so here we have oxygen bonded oxygen so this is O2 the oxygen molecule found in air that we breathe in and is essential to life um, and this is an elemental molecule because you just have two um, two oxygens bonded to each other um, another type of molecule we see is um, a compound molecule um, sometimes they're just abbreviated down to element and compound um, but a molecule is just any uh, the multiple atoms bonded together and um, this co this compound molecule here is CO2 or carbon dioxide uh, you know global warming all that all that jazz um, very f uh, you know been very much in the news recently um, and into the future I'm sure and it's um, a compound because it's got two different types of atoms bonded to each other it's got oxygen bonded to a central carbon so they're, they're different they're different elements because um, uh, they have different numbers of protons uh, the oxygens have the same number of protons but the carbon has a different number of protons so um, because they're different elements bonded together they're called a compound 
And then what we'll mainly be concerning ourselves with in biology is something called a macromolecule. So a macromolecule is a molecule that's actually very large and very generally very long, very big, very bulky. Um, so these are things like carbohydrates and proteins and, and, and fats. And these are the things that make up our body, large, large chemicals um, that have specific functions. So we're going to have the entire video series, sorry on macromolecules, but um, here I've showed a, a polypeptide chain which is part of a protein. So you can see there's a lot of different um, atoms and a lot of different elements all, all bonded together um, in quite a large structure that um, it sort of starts here and then continues down past the page. I'm not going to draw the whole thing. They can be enormous. Um, so those are essentially the classes of, of, of different matter that we're going to look at. Um, we are also going to look at ions. So there's two um, types of ions. There's a negatively charged ion where there's more electrons than protons because electrons are negatively charged. If you have more, the the um, ion can be negatively charged. So for example, um, chlorine with a negative charge is called an anion. So you can remember this however you want, but negatively charged species are called anions and this um, this doesn't need to necessarily be one negative. Um, other species can be two negative or three negative. Generally, chlorine is only one, though. Uh, uh, the examples I've used are generally only one, but you can get and hy uh, hy um, hydrogen plus here um, is definitely only one because it, it only has one proton, so you can go in the up, go, go up one way. Um, here we have a uh, positive hydrogen um, and positive ions are called cations. As, as written here, um, and um, positive ions again can be multiple, you can have multiple positive charges from multiple electrons being ripped off, but um, I've included hydrogen here for a bit of a discussion on pH, so a lot of people talk about the acidity or, or the pH of something, um, when we talk about pH or acidity, we're, we're talking, acidity is caused by um, by the presence of these um, H plus ions, and um, like when you taste an acidic fruit, um, or, or an acidic food that you're tasting these um, these these um, positively charged hydrogen species pretty much and um, pH is is equal to a log is, is derived off a logarithmic scale of the concentration of H plus that's essentially what you need to know if you want to remember that exact formula it will come in useful at some point um, because it's a very um, widely used formula um, pH equals negative the logarithm log um, base 10 logarithm of the concentration of um, H plus iron, but um, essentially you just need to remember that pH is related to the concentration of um, H plus, um, the hydrogen cation, and it's um, if you want to go even further, it's in a logarithmic relationship. But um, that that's just an extra thing that you might want to learn because it's actually quite useful in many ways later. Um, now we're just going to finish up this video by looking at the different types of bonds we see. So first we'll talk about a covalent bond. So a co covalent bond is something like here where you have two atoms and they're joined by sharing um, a, a, a pair of electrons between them. So one species will give one electron and the other will give a lot, another electron and they'll orbit, they'll sort of orbit both, both atoms. And by doing so you get um, a bond, uh, they, they, they're, they're attracted to each other, they're sharing these electrons, so, so um, they, by sharing the electrons they, they sort of um, uh, get glued together and so you form this covalent bond through this sort of sharing. The complete opposite is where you get an ionic bond, which is for example here, there's a bond created when chlorine steals electrons um, and this is due to chlorine being highly what's called electronegative, so it, it, it's highly, it, it really attracts electrons very strongly. Um, chlorine steals electrons from sodium here, and we get a negatively charged chlorine appearing and a positively charged sodium appearing. And because this is positive and this is negative, and positive and negative attract, um, just like north and south of a magnet, um, these actually form a, a, a strong um, bond because um, the positive attract attracts the negative, so they stick together in that way. Um, a bit in between these two, and that's called an ionic bond. Sorry, um, because you form two an uh, you form two ions, um, such as here. So you form in an ionic bond, you get an anion here and a cation here, and they they're attracted due to their opposite charges, and that forms the bond. 
and that is actually the pretty much strongest type of bond we'll talk about. Um, in between the ionic bond and the and the covalent bond, we have a co polar covalent bond where um, the electrons aren't completely ripped from um, one of the atoms, but the the electrons um, spend more time around one atom than another because um, one atom, the, uh, one particular atom, is more electronegative, as I mentioned before. And we'll talk about this a lot more in the first video when we talk about the um, chemical environment of life, but water is an example. Um, the oxygen in water is more electronegative, so it, it attracts uh, electrons to a much greater degree, and so it drains electrons. And there's still a covalent bond, they're still sort of sharing the electrons between them. The electrons do spend time out on the hydrogens, but they spend more time around the oxygen than around the hydrogen, so the, the, the bond is um, slightly polar. Um, is what's called polar because you form these these electrical poles. You form the po a negative end and a positive end. And finally, um, is a um, we'll talk about a hydrogen bond, which is the main type of um, intramolecular. So it's not the holding the molecule together; it's between different molecules um, bond, which we'll talk about. And it, it's um, may it's interesting because it's um, one of the main um, forces um, to do with water. And it's where these um these um polar ends um formed by a polar covalent bond um these dipoles interact with positive interacting with negative and you get a a, a positive negative interaction between these two here and you actually get this water molecule sort of um being glued a little to this molecule and that's why water when you when you um you know drop it um it sticks together in a drop it doesn't need to vaporize into a, a million different particles and when you know you overfill a glass it sort of can go over the brim because the water is sticking to each other slightly and that forms things like surface tension and adhesion and cohesion and different things you might have heard of before so hydrogen bonds are in between molecules between strong dipoles um, such as in water between this um, partial positive hydrogen and this partial negative oxygen. So that's just a bit of an intro into the basic chemistry and some of the co um, concepts I'll be talking about in the next uh, I'll be using to talk about the biology in the next few videos. Um, there's no real if you're not sure of any of the chemistry um, Wikipedia is your friend or, or a um, basic um, chemistry text online maybe um, most of the chemistry should be manageable even from so for someone with a no chemistry background hopefully